Appreciate time. it. You know that. You know yes. that. Yeah. All right. I met with Tim uh, in January. He came up, drove up from January. Him and I met together. We started talking about electronic products. And then Tim actually uh, invited me here to present to the electronic products to you guys. So um, what this is going to do, it's going to kind of reduce your inventory. Uh, because as you know, the mechanical TCs are size specific only. So if you're going to stock um, 3Ms, 5Ms, you know, you're probably going to put five or six of those on the shelf and you're just going to have a wealth of uh, stock in there. When all you've got to do um, when we get to the ETC is just stock one, program it just like an IMC and it's good to go. So you take, you take your stock, it's less stock, uh, only offer your customer the ETC and uh, we're off and rolling. So, you know, just like everything else, you know, there's, a, there's, there's an involvement of product and everything is going electronic. So, um, you know, the electronics now this year for you guys probably should be the way to go. We're gonna start, um, Tim asked me to kind of go, we, we did have some changes within our organization. Um, we now have a global sales um, VP and that's Kevin Beaver so he's he has been covering for years uh, Asia Pacific uh, and, and some of those areas so they just kind of gave him the role um, the, the title to that role and so he is now over all of us in the uh, in North America uh, so he is our sales leader uh, Lou is my boss and I fall under Lou um, for the Midwest, Jason is part of that, and, and further west and Canada. So the only thing that changed was Kevin's title. Kevin still covers the East Coast with the guys on the East Coast. Lou still covers us on the West Coast and, and mid, um, mid Americas. So just a title change. Other than that, <clears throat> we're, we're still rolling and going. And we're also, uh, we picked up Flow Safe, as you guys know. And we're also looking at acquiring other businesses right now. So those are all under NDA. Um, so I can't even talk about it. But there's there's other businesses that we're trying to incorporate into to what we do. So we want to have a total gas business slash water business as well. So that's what we're we're striving for right now. Omar, we did have the folks say Paul. Yep. In jail here earlier in the week. Yep. So yep. So they're part of our team now, and we're happy, happy to have them. Paul's back in the in the group, as you guys know. Paul was with us uh, several years ago. Uh, there was a management change, and Paul stepped out to go to FlowSafe. So he's been there uh, since then. So now he's back, back with us. So today we're going to start out with the 10C25. For those of you, all of you that should know um, the D1000s um, that we have now, because all of you have gray hair, just like me, <laughs> or no hair at all, like gray. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> yeah, there he goes, there he goes. You know, they say people, when, the, when they have an amp amputation, sometimes they feel their arms. Greg still feels his hair that used to be there. <laughs> so, I love you too. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's hard to be humble, right, when you're perfect in every way? So, so the 10C25 is just a, basically when you look at it on your desk, that is kind of the cartridge. Uh, that's inside the, uh, the D1000, uh, kind of a little bit on a bigger scale. Um, it does have the electronics, so everything about the 10C25 is the same as the D1000, just on a very smaller <coughs> scale, okay? So for, for any of the customers, uh, let's just say one gas in Austin, talking to uh, uh, John Hetzel, you know, with the new high rises that are going in and the meter banks and the tight spaces in the meter banks, he's thinking that this thing right here will be, you know, his solution to having a cleaner look on a meter bank system like that for, for, for some of the new uh, developments that are going up. So Omar, it's safe to say that we could take a cartridge from a 10C and put it in the D1000, it's exactly the same. No, you can't put the cartridge in there. It won't fit. Okay. That's a different cartridge, but it's based on the same, everything's the same. The internals, the, the dimensions are the same. It's just a bigger body to hold the pressure um, for this particular unit. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. 
and why this isn't working. There we go. All right, so basically it's a compact meter, uh, 1,000 uh, actual cubic foot uh, for, this, for this particular meter. It is 25 pounds uh, MAOP. Some of these are gonna be uh, temperature compensated and some of these won't. So we'll need to know from the customer whether or not they want TC or non-TC. So pricing will be a little bit different for the TCs as well. Okay, so if you look at the small uh, compactness of it, you know, the ease of mounting and storage, this is gonna be a smaller box, uh, smaller profile. Again, fast testing via the snap prover uh, because it's uh, electronic. So you just hook it up to the, to the electronics and snap prover just like the D1000s and have the same quick uh, testing of one. You, you've got snap provers. We have snaps in New Mexico measurement systems here in the area. Correct, correct, okay. So our pressure rating is at 25 pounds. Uh-huh, okay. 25, yep. What kind of software were these ones? These same ones? software you have for the D1, yep, same software. Yep, we put it all together. Oil-free design, so there's no oil that goes in here. These are these are um, sealed bearings, just like you would have found in the AC15, the 5C15, uh, the D1000s, uh, D800s, and these are those are following the same bearing. Okay, it's the same bearing we use in those that we use in these. Omar, is, I'm to get yep. Just like 45 light. Whatever you want. You can change two inch. Yeah, yeah. So what we're doing is, if it'll fit within that machining area yes we will machine it to whatever it'll fit so if two inches outside that area then we won't be able to do it okay what's the standard yeah I was gonna say, yeah. 45 light 45. yeah but it's you know spray whatever it is that the customers looking at just let us know it'll change the part number of it yeah. but yeah we, we're able to do several we, several we actually have a customer for the with 30 light because they're piping yeah and so they're what we're quoting is 30 light for their test Okay, is that the uh, the electrical? Yeah, power generation. Yes, yes, yes. Can, yeah. Can the base be rotated? Yes, as a matter of fact, you're way ahead of my presentation. Oh, slow down. Sorry. Hey, you coffee too? What's the range of ability? <laughs> okay, so the range ability on these, and we'll get to that, is gonna be basically the same as the D1000s. So it's gonna pick up very, very low flow. Um, so the, the range abilities are really good on it. So we'll get to that. Hopefully it's in this presentation. <laughs> Hello. Sorry. Oh, yeah. We know a little bit about meters. I'm sorry? We know a little bit about meters. We're very excited. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the, the window on this is a, a secure uh, tampered seal, um, tempered glass. Um, and, and we do that because if you look at the bottom of that six foot tank, we've had one in that tank for quite some time. We actually put these together um, at the request of Southern California Gas because they wanted to do away with the 8C15, 5C15. But while we were doing it, we also got got asked about the um, the vault meters, which American doesn't make anymore. They can, but they they generally want a certain amount, like a large amount, in order to make a run. So what we decided to do was go ahead and make these waterproof, some of these waterproof. So if you have an application where it's got to go in a vault and it's going to see water, let us know um, because we can do these um, with, a, with a waterproof seals in them. Can, can you hear me back? Am I loud enough for you back here? Oh, I got you turned up. Okay, good. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and, and no, I'm not, I'm not, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm getting to you what you need. <clears throat> Um, again, curve, uh, curve vault uh, compatible. If you look down here at the bottom bottom left picture, you'll see where these two pieces connect for side and top inlet. Okay, so you can rotate it depending on what the customer has out in the field, the applications. You can do bi-directional flow. So you can program it for just like an IMC, forward, reverse, forward plus reverse. Um, it's all programmable to, to, to do that. There is a debris screen in there. Uh, I think that's 60 mesh. Um, and I'm not sure right now. I'm trying to find out what other meshes we have or if we have uh, another uh, mesh for those. <clears throat> but if the customer needs, there's, uh, we do have a mesh kit for it. Um, you can do bottom inlet, again, bidirectional, horizontal or vertical mounting. Mark that mesh screen. Can we take that out? Sure, you can. 
Speed of ring, snap ring. Yep. Of so if the customer doesn't need it, you don't have to have it. Well, we still filter. And so the thought is maybe we just use that as filtration. We've had you know, customers in the past that used to use the old uh, gasket, gasket strainers. And yep. What happens is once they get so full, they run through that rotary and we got a problem. Yep. So we don't promote those. We promote filters, filtration. Gotcha. Yeah. Could you put a direct companion plane on this if you wanted to? I'm sure you could, yeah. Yeah, if it'll fit. I don't know if, it, you know, if you're looking at, well, you'll have to turn the, the maybe the head a little bit. Um, but if you're looking at having an AMR on there, maybe it won't, maybe it will. Maybe you'll have to have a little extension on there. With, yeah. The ones with pipe nipples, because we were having full both the it's about a three inch. Pipe nipple coming yep. there on each end available as well. Oh, really? really in connection. Okay. So you could because it'll be above your AMR and spread a flange on okay. Yeah, so then you're looking at your space between the two flanges then. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. So these are AMR compatible. Um, so we do have pulse out output flexibility, three different pulse outputs. Uh, you got, uh, so you have top, we have one that has a top, we have one that has both top and bottom. So if you're looking at the if you're looking at the unit, you'll see the the outputs on right behind the uh, the electronics. Yeah, <clears throat> and then one for bottom only. So if customers are kind of uh, if customers are, are are leery about having something on the top because of water intrusion, these are IP68, 67 rated. Um, but even still, if they have that unease, you can go bottom only. If they need extra, you can go top and bottom. Yes, sir. So I've quoted these before, but originally like the 10C, 25s, the TC I don't think were available yet, or are those available now? They should be available, yeah, real soon if not available now. Okay. Hey, yeah. Mark, are you seeing more people go with bottom only than the, the dual setup? People right now aren't um, real 100% um, uh, on the, on the, um, the IP ratings yet. Um, so yeah, we are seeing a lot of bottom, and then some that needed the extra pulses. You know that you do the top end, yeah, top end bottom. Well, you can see they have the AMR system. So you want the top, top end to run that small head kills from the top as opposed to running that extra wiring from the from the bottom. Yeah. Did any of those boxes have the cable in them? The um, yeah, I think that was it. You just grab. I'm sorry. I think that's it right there. No, this is the I think this is the bigger one. Oh, it's it? a small it's a smaller cable. Anyway, <laughs> if, if we have it, we'll pass it around. Okay. Again, we talked a little bit about the snap prover uh, and how we can run it with the snap prover. We do have extra. There are extra cables that have to go with it, of course. If you have the ones for the D1000s, they'll work. Okay. Okay. Uh, this just talks about uh, ANSI B109, uh, the forward direction, uh, inlet screens, which we've talked about before. We've already we've already discussed this. Now we did have an issue with uh, a customer that had uh, uh, in Florida with this badging. There's only so if your customer needs a badge, which maybe they do, maybe they don't. There's only so much we can put on the badge because there's only so much real estate we we have to work with. Okay, so um, hopefully you don't run into that like we did. But if you do, let us know. Oh, and that's it for that. So, uh, getting into the ETC, did any of you guys touch the ETC as of yet? Yes. Meaning, do you sell it? Uh, are you familiar with it? Treat it like we don't know jack about it. Okay. Because only a couple of the flavor. So, again, the ETC is an electronic temperature compensated unit. So this particular unit will go on um, your 8C through 16M meters. Okay? Is that right, Rashad? Can you still hear me? Rashad's asleep? Anyway. That's right. Okay. So basically, I'm sorry? Okay, he's still asleep. Um, it's a direct replacement. So you go out to you go out to a site, they've got a uh, mechanical unit on there or let's say they have a counter on there and they want to go to TC so you just grab one of these guys off the shelf take your computer program it for the size 
five dial, eight dial, whatever it is, like you would do a uh, microcorrector, install it, and you're good to go. Wow. Do we have to put in base and atmosphere? Depends on if that's what the customer wants you to put in. It's gonna, they're gonna be your standard um, default. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a default when it comes out of the box. Okay. So you're able to view it just like you would a microcorrector yep. uh, with the software that you have, the meterware that you have. And if there's anything you want changed or they need changed, you can do that right in the system. Okay. You can print them off or send them a configuration sheet. Uh, you can save it on your computer and you can give that configuration sheet to your customer or send that to your customer so that they know how it's configured. We have very special customers the more that we have to usually fill those blanks anymore. I'm sure you do. Yeah. But like again, just so that they know what you've done yeah. and how it's configured, if they have if you come back to another uh, to them another day and they say, you know what, I want you to configure it this way, that other site. This is how this is how we like it. So you'll have that as well. Makes it easier for you guys. Uh Okay, ETC uh, with circular outputs, uh, and then we do have the AMR bracket for them. So the AMR bracket, depending on whether it's top inlet or side inlet, you're able to rotate that um, to accommodate whatever inlet uh, side uh, the meter's in. Well, we just talked about that. Oh, we also, this is the, uh, for the Series A meters. So we do have an adapter, as you see, to go on A series meters as well. Any of you guys deal with A series meters? Any you guys know them as LMMA? LMMAs? Yeah. Yep. You do? Okay. So if you're going to ETC with those, you'll need that, that adapter. We'll need to know before we ship it out to you that you, you're going to need the adapter. For all of us in here, we're going to convert them to V3 and move on. Okay. Boom. There we go. Done. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so uh, direct mounting for uh, ITRON remotes. Uh, it, of course, it does have a tamper resistant design on it. So, uh, and then we also are adaptable to other AMR manufacturers as well. So, do you guys generally see other than uh, ITRON at your customer sites? Yes. You do? What do you have? Census. 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 Okay. Yeah, clear. Okay. Some customers, have you ever heard of Zinner? Mm -mm. There's some unis and pansies that do Zinner. Okay. It's a water based system. You've got Neptunes. Yeah, Neptunes. Like I've heard of Neptune. Water -based. So they're using those outside of the water? Yes. yes. For oh, yeah. gas? Yes. Wow. Yeah, not successfully, but they are trying to. <laughs> it's, it's a cluster. I mean, it okay. They're asking me about retrofitting the rotaries in larger outside of small diaphragms. It would be good if we could take a look at that at the factory and maybe look. I mean, are we talking about a large scale? It's not really. I mean, maybe combining a lot of municipalities, pretty decent scale. Yeah, it might be good for us to take a look at it and see um, if we want to change the mounting scheme of this because it probably wouldn't mount. You would probably have to drill some holes out on site and use the screws that are provided if it does fit but then again i don't know what it accepts we will, wouldn't know what it accepts as far as your pulse outputs and how to wire it up right that would be the other issue so keep an eye out on that or so it says compensated so it's just compensated for temperature not pressure factor. fixed factor okay, you, so can, you, can do, you can do a fixed factor pressure in these guys what about the turntable? On that? Not on this one, sir. Any limitation on the fixed factor? I mean, just if they're running the pressure on the meter or handle it, this can happen. Yep. Okay. Yep. And no. No. Right? Yeah. Is that what you would? I was asking if it has a trim table. You're saying no. No, not this one. Yes. Only the, the IMC. And the IMC only because it's got live pressure. It can do the trim. No live. Yeah. Yep. Uh, basically, um, here's here's a, a photo of the the electronic board that's in there. Um, you got fast model five prover testing. Here's another sell on this: is that your eight C's take forever if you've got them on a model five. Those of you that have been out in the field and did a model five prover test, you know TCs take forever. 
these guys, quick testing just like the IMC. Okay, so you can run minutes. Oh. Like you do the IMC? Absolutely. With smart proof. Smart proof? Not smart proof. This isn't on smart proof. Okay. The only thing that's on smart proof is going to be the IMC. Okay? okay. But you can test it, and it is a lot quicker than you would a, 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 a manual TC. So we just take a pulse off of it? Instead of yeah, so what you'll do is you'll just put the, uh, the little box that you would use on the D1000 on the back of this. On the back of the whoever has the ETC, there's a um, oh, there's a port on the very back for the Erta cable. Yep. Yeah, just like you would do the D1000. Yeah. Plug it in, and you're good to go. Okay. Yep. Cool. So you got three pulse outputs, two form, two form A's, one form B. You have a basically 150 days of logging data. So that's another cell uh, while you're out in the field. This thing will log that data for them. So customers that have questions or concerns about um, their measurement, it's all going to be right inside that little, right inside that ETC. So that's another good sell, uh, upsell on it. <clears throat> the lithium battery in here, depending on where it is going to be uh, located, is anywhere. It's a 20-year battery. Uh, it's got good warranty on it. But majority of the time, it's going to be somewhere between 15 and 20 years. So in the hotter climates, it's going to be less. In the colder climates, you're going to get more. Go ahead. Are we able to change those out in the field? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you'll remove that back plate. There's some screws back down the back plate to access the battery, and you're able to do that. So if there's a warranty issue on the battery, we'll send a battery out, okay. and it's just uh, take it out, put another one in. What is the warranty on? Uh, I know we'll hit it. Okay. Rashad, what do you know offhand? Oh, right. Just when it comes up. 30 days, 30 seconds, <laughs> 30, 30, 30, 5 miles, 5 minutes. Yeah, okay. So basically, uh, we do the factory installed uh, on both new meters, uh, repair meters. Um, we have factory configured uh, um, configurations that we can do on site for customers if need be. You guys are going to be able to do that in the field based on what your customer asks you for. Okay, so you'll have to work that, work that through with your customers. So customers such as One Gas, Atmos, Centerpoint, if they have, if they're ordering from us, we put it in our system. We, we, uh, we work up a specification for them. And so everything that comes through the factory goes out a certain way um, in their flavor. Okay, testing the ETC with the Model 6 Prover. Uh, as you see, and we talked about earlier, it's a 90% reduction in, in the testing time. A big sell for you guys out in the field. Okay, uh, fast two-minute TC proving, uh, which is direct uh, supported by us, uh, and of course our system comes with pre-configured tests. Can I go get a demo uh, model six for us to <laughs> make a test for you? You know what? I'll do one for an introductory price of 30k, <laughs> and that's that's a brother-in-law price for you guys. Come on. <laughs> I don't think that is. <laughs> yeah, brother, not a brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, again, this is a uh, two-minute proving. We're going to say this again and again and again. This is a good, good sell. There's your, there's your uh, IR interface where it's going to, where it's going to test off the modified prover. So basically, it's just you already have it for the D1000s. This will work right into it. So it's not, not nothing, nothing that you'll have to buy extra because you already have it. <clears throat> Even though I will sell it, sell it to you too. All right. So basically, what you're going to do is get your magnet. If you look at the ETC, you'll scroll across the front of it, and you'll scroll till you get to the prover. Um, and this is with all the products that we have. So your 10C25, same way. Your ETC, same way. And your D1000s, the same way. You're going to scroll across the screen to get to prover mode uh, to do your your prover test. It's all the same. Yep. Yep. So, of course, optional AM, AMR, AMI mounting platform, uh, compatible with most AMR devices. We'll have to find out if that one is uh, the squiggly that you're talking about. Um, we do that at the factory, uh, and then we program at the factory as well. You guys will need somebody on site to do the programming if they're doing AMR there or through their shop somebody.
Do you guys have uh, any of the AMR, uh, any of the ITRON? We, we have various systems within our 20 state region, obviously, but we're, we're at a player. Okay. Not really. Careful, uh, yeah. Careful. We're a clarity group. Okay. Since your legal counsel has yeah. <laughs> reminded you. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to write it down now. <laughs> All right. So index warranty is four years, and there you go. Your battery warranty is 12 years. Wow. That's a really good battery warranty. Okay. okay. Wow. So there's the legal documentation at the bottom. Which I don't need How to long are you seeing the batteries last? Like we haven't had a battery issue yet. Okay. Yeah, as of yet. So we're good. Okay, uh, the product recap. So we're talking about two minute TC prover testing. Most of you that tested out in the field, anything that we have out there, really, unless you're running a 16M, doesn't test that fast because your check, your check rate is always so slow. You're gonna have, you're gonna sit out there for a little while. We have AMR capability, 150 days of logging capability, um, <clears throat> hourly data. So that's a lot of data, uh, depending on what, you, what you're looking for. That's a ton of data. All right, 20 year average battery life in the colder climate. So for, further north, you'll see, you'll see the 20 year. Uh, further south, you're probably gonna see somewhere 15, around the 15 year uh, battery life. Uh, and of course, we do it. We do the configurations and the installations at the factory as well. You guys will probably buy these as 400 assemblies, and I think they'll do really well for you guys. Um, so your your two isolated form uh, A, which is no pulse outputs. Uh, there's configurable, which is compensated, non-compensated. Uh, you can have faults or, dis or disable the faults. So some of your customers may want a fault, uh, some may not. Uh, so the difference between an alarm is basically it, it, it was out of range of what it was set. So if you have parameters that it wants to see and, it, and it's outside those parameters, you'll get an alarm, okay? A fault means that there's probably something wrong with the unit, whether that be a battery, um, a pulse output, um, something that the that, and, and of course it logs that, the date, the time, there's a date and time stamp on that as well, so you can recover that uh, as to when it happened. When you look at the screen, will there be some sort of flashing yeah. indicator? That's yeah, so you'll see a little alarm bell. Okay. Yep. Okay, so pulse outputs with the ETC AMR bracket, uh, one isolated form A uh, via the, the circular connector. Uh, you have another one for the AMR bracket uh, or the cable. And then you'll have a, a form B, uh, which is in the, um, the AMR uh, cable as well. So you can, depending on what the customer's looking for, there's, there's several options for them uh, at that point. And it all mimics, it all mimics the, uh, the IMC. So for those of you familiar with the IMC, it's just a different meter wear, which looks exactly like the uh, M cut. Okay, it looks it, and it functions exactly like the M cut. And, and other than whenever you hook up to the ETC, you're going to see the ETC on the screen. When you hook up to the D1000, you're going to see the D1000 on the screen. When you hook up to the 10C25, you're going to see the 10C25 on the screen. Okay, so you know that you're talking to the right. Um, product that you're trying to uh, configure. <clears throat> so you see the logging capabilities, it's basically going to look, those of you familiar with the, with the IMC, it's going to look the same. So when you pull up your logs, this is what you're going to get. So based, based on your log parameters, uh, and all these are basically what we see on the left, um, in the logging um, sheet, that's 150 days worth of compensated volume, non-compensated volume, all that's listed there. So that's a lot of data. Um, our ease of communication uh, on the interface has to do with the uh, ERTA cable. So we use the ERTA cable for the configuration, to do the configuration, load the configuration. For prover testing, 
uh, for your single point temperature calibration and firmware upgrades. So basically if there's a firmware upgrade, we'll let you know. Um, if you need to go to the site and upgrade, which you know, while you're there, if you're there, uh, and you want to do the upgrade, if you're able to do that, you'll need the or a cable to do that. Most of you already have that. Omar, because I have a specific customer in mind, on the temperature calibration, can you change that calibration to record like an as found as left, or is it simply, do you have the ability to, to move that calibration? Yes. Based on your standard? Yeah, if some say um, we have a customer that they're required to do when they install, and then once a year test any temperature probe. And so if they did an ice bath mm -hmm. you know, and test, can they go in and tell, okay, we're off a degree to change the calibration in the... In yeah, the it's a single point, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. You, you go into the software to do that? Yeah, you'll go into this, you'll go into the uh, meterware, mm -hmm. uh, and you'll do the single point calibration, and you'll see what it is, and then you'll refer it to the reference, uh, and then you'll make the changes there if you need to. It's a very large customer, and that's one of their first questions. If anything that has a, a temperature probe for electronic correction, can we do an ice bath calibration? On it? Yes. So it's an yeah. annual check and a yeah. comparative test. To right. Yep. And that's generally with anything that's TC, you're probably going to hear the same thing. Yeah. So that's why we're able to do that with the ET, uh, ETC um, and with the um, TNC25. Yeah. Those that have probes, you're able to do the single point calibration on okay. that. So that meets the requirements. Of the yep. Yep. <clears throat> okay, with the measurement system, this is all basically the, 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 the probe that we use as a PT-1000 uh, Precision RTD. The ranges, of course, are following what our, what our meter ranges are, the minus 40 to 140. Uh, and then basically you'll see down here at the bottom, less than 0.1 degree uh, over the entire temperature range um, variation. So it's a, it's a pretty good probe. Okay, here's your single point calibration, what you were talking about. So you can access it pretty easily. Go in here, there's your reference, offset reference temperature, um, and you're able to make those changes within the system itself. Very good. Okay, there we talked about the alarms. They notify you, notify you of an event. Uh, high, low temperature, if you've got those parameters set, uh, or the customer says, you know, I want this set uh, for, my, for my temperature, uh, or high flow um, volume, or low battery. And those are all clearable through the system. Okay, so you can go in there if you see it. Um, you can go by, uh, hook up to the, to the meter, uh, to the ETC, and clear those faults that are there once you verify what those are, or alarms. Now the faults um, let you know something that actually happened. Like I said, low um, a volume error, which could be the the probe that's our, or the, the the unit that's picking up the volume, uh, the pulses, uh, the temperature sensor could be bad, or something in the internal operations of the actual unit itself. So at that point, it's it's probably need needed to be taken off and, and sent back to us because uh, something probably happened within it. Are these just displayed, or is there an output as well, like electronic? Well, you can do that in the um, that's taken out in, in your output, your pulse output selections. Okay. Yeah, so they can see it, and then you can see it on the screen as well, or see it when you hook up to the to the unit. So if they have, let's say they have a battery uh, or volume uh, pulse out from the unit into a either the AMR or um, a back system, they're able to see it as well. So if it's that if it's that important where it's at and they want to see it and capture it via a SCADA system, yeah, they'll see that. Okay, uh, parameters. Here's kind of the same thing. Those are familiar with the IMC. You're able to tell the system what you want seen on the screen. So if there's something your customer doesn't want to see on the screen then you can deselect it and it won't be seen. So for those customers that go out and look at it and make a phone call, what is this that I'm seeing on the screen? Well, if you disable it, they can't call you about it. 
Okay. Keeps their meter readers from actually putting uncompensated volume in their book instead of compensated. Correct. That's Correct. Right. Correct. And if they don't have a battery, I mean a, a a magnet, they won't be able to get to it either. They won't be able to scroll through the through the screens that are readable. Okay. So all you have to do is either check what you want seen and uncheck what you don't want seen. Okay. And here you go with your magnet. Protects against curiosity, curiosity scrolling. Um, <clears throat> the lenses are element impact of the environment. So I don't know what the heck that means other than we buy these from somebody else. GE used to make them too. Uh, eliminates the potential leak path. Um, and no mechanical wear, which, oh well. So Omar, if, if there is an issue with these, in terms of there being some type of alarm and the meter readers going up to it, are they still able to get a reading without a magnet, or is it going to show some type of fault where they, they can't get that reading now? Well, the reading is going to be on the screen, so they'll be able to take the reading. And so they'll, they'll be able to get their read out, uh -huh. and it'll be a bell like the IMC? Yep. Yeah, so it follows the same the same um, logic as the IMC. Yeah, and you'll be able to once you connect to it, see when that that event occurred, and then you know go back from there. Okay. So the ETC also has, along with the 10C25 and the D1000, you have fixed factor pressure compensation. So that's selectable uh, within the uh, the system itself. So if a customer needs fixed factor, it's available. Um, and they also, we can also do it. We can turn the you can turn the temperature, the live temperature off. Uh, for the for the non TC, uh, you can select the fixed factor temperature if that's what they want as well. And talking about batteries again, colder climates, you got the plus 20 years, the warmer climates, somewhere around 15 years. And also in the 10C25 D1000s, those are also changeable batteries as well. Okay, so they're easily accessible. Um, all the units, you can do the battery change out in the field. Are they all lithium or is there an alkaline No, there's no... We, we're trying to get away from alkaline. Um, yeah, IMC is the only one that has that. So we're trying to get away from that. They're harder to store. They don't last. They're harder to get. Uh, lithium is kind of the way to go right now. The only problem with lithium is the transportation of it. Right. Yeah, so those are the only headaches we get with those. Hey, if you change out the battery in the field, do you have to connect to it to clear the alarm if you do it through the screen? No, you have to go through the system. You the yeah, you got. There's no other way to, to clear it. You got to. You got to. You got to plug into it. Okay. So uh, basically, 150 days of hourly data, um, and it holds the the meter configuration. That's not going to change, uh, and retains the stored data uh, without the power connected to the system. So it's going to contain. Once you disconnect and reconnect, it's all still going to be there. Any questions on the ETC? All versions now available. Uh, all configurations, you know, top, bottom, dual. That's already good. Yeah, that's still going to be programmable in the system as well. And it's all available. We can order now that we're not waiting on different versions to come out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, what's the lead time on it? That all depends on what we're seeing at the factory today. So you guys also, so that you all know some of you do, some of you don't. Um, we build to order. We do not stock anything like you guys on the shelf. So it's all build to order. So depending on what's come in now, cold, colder, colder years, we're going to be backed up on some of this stuff. Um, but I would have to go ahead and guess um, six to eight weeks. Don't lie. Yeah. If the battery dies on it, does it keep all the data? Yes. You mentioned something about us potentially having to be on site with the end user for AMR and AMI. Mm -hmm. Typically what we'll do in-house is we'll pre-program like the IMCs and set it out so the customer already understands what that pulse rate. Is that going to be something we can do with this as well? 
just ahead of time? Yeah, if, if you send them a configuration and say, I need you to fill this out so I can put this together here, is that what you're asking? Yeah, that's... Absolutely. I mean, we try to streamline that process because it creates a lot of headaches for these guys. Yeah. So if you're doing that in-house, perfect. That's how we do it. We pre-program it, and then we send it out to our customer. So the good thing is, if you guys are doing that now, you guys, per you guys would have basically a spec for that company, right? And so whenever you get it, you program it, knowing that it's going to go to Nicole, and it gets done. Well, she, she'll probably have her own over there, but knowing that it's going to go somewhere else, yeah. So uh, all, all pulse rates are programmable on the ETCs? Yeah. Perfect. Anything you do with the IMC is going to be the same. Yep. So again, those that have knowledge and have had hands on with the IMCs, um, same with the D1000, 10C25, ETC. Perfect. Yep. It just looks a little different. Right? It's nice. Yeah. And it's all in one software, which is the meterware. And at some point, hopefully, moving into the new corrector, that'll all go in there as well. So it's only one software that covers all the products that, that we sell electronically. Yep. You guys already are doing the IMCs. Um, you may not be doing the IMC DP just yet. So basically the IMC DP uh, takes 30 second snapshots. Once it has the volume it needs to take those snapshots of the DP at the meter site. So for your customers that want to see um, or that are doing DP, this is a great little tool for them because not only does it take a snapshot every 30 seconds, it logs that snapshot as well. Okay, so you're able to walk up to the meter, push no, it's upside down, push the button, scroll through the screen, and see what the DP, the last DP was. So a lot of the sites we go to, some of the meters are oversized, right? So during the summer, it's gonna be really hard to see the DP when you come up to it. But right now, when it's cold and the, and the gas flow is going, we know they're gonna reach probably 30% of that volume uh, at that site. So this guy right here will log that volume. Okay, so that's, that's the really neat thing about the DP corrector. <clears throat> it monitors the health of the meter. Not the accuracy, the health. Yes, sir. Uh, so is that constantly updating, Omar? So the latest and greatest sample it can take is an upgrade the health of the meter? Yeah. So it tells you what that DP is. Then so it records. And it records. It logs it. And does it turn to the guys like you're talking about? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, depending on what you have selected to, to log. Now, if you're logging everything, you may get... You may get four months, okay? If you're just logging everything hourly, um, but it, it still has a lot of like logging capability, just like the ETC, the D1000, 10C25. Now, is this one gonna have a new push button like the new line C? That one will, that's a demo. That's what Yeah, so all of this style mm -hmm. DP will have all the new uh, cover and the new push button on the side, yeah. Freak me out for someone out there who's going to get the button to scroll through it. Like, there's no button. Yeah. So, so you guys already have some of those or seen some of those in the field? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, buttons on the side. Not yeah. Buttons. So what you'll see now is we have a piping kit. You guys could have a piping kit. So on the on the bottom right, you have the meters uh, showing uh, the, the uh, P1, P2 uh, plumbed in to the back of the IMC uh, for that pressure for those pressure transducers and of course external it's also for pressure monitor and pressure externally uh, from the bottom so we do it does come with an AMR bracket if you guys were doing AMR we, we can fit an AMR bracket on there um, so for those customers that want DP um, we can also do AMR on that the really neat thing about this the new upgrades now, we are now compatible with uh, AutoSoul and MV90. So any customers out there that have a back-end system that bring in the data
from the outside in uh, via AutoSole or MV90, if you put a modem out there uh, and hook up to the meter, they're able to pull that data and see that data from the from the they, IMC. So they can use anybody, any modem, not the So right now, um, Sierra Wireless. Um, yeah, pretty much any modem. Okay, that's, yeah. that'll be the next question from the customer. But. Yep. Yeah, so our IMCs are now compatible with that, so we're able to see that, communicate with that. I also just learned a couple of weeks ago that they're now machining meters with the differential ports on the back for that meter, for that IMC. So instead of seeing, so if you're in a top end situation, all that stuff's in the back coming to the back of the IMC. It won't be in the front. If you want it that way, we can do it that way. So there are customers that want it that way. FYI. So it's not standard, but you can request it. You can. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of seeing those differential ports there, they'll be in the back for an application, something like that, if they want a custom like that. <clears throat> so basically, uh, it's, a, it's a modular design. Uh, the enclosure can be modified to suit the specific needs of the customer. But it's the same enclosure. Um, we have a wide range of, of mounting styles. So we have the integral unit, and then we have um, the other unit that mounts somewhere else on the system. It doesn't have to mount on the meter itself. Okay, the wall so that, mount, the wall mount. that's right, right, the wall mount. <clears throat> And Europe likes the wall mounted, so that's why we have it. No ID mount any longer. Not right now. Okay. Not right now. Do you guys see a lot of the ID requests? I mean, I know we've talked to you about it. I know we try to get numbers on it. Um, we just didn't have a whole lot of uh, traction for ID for the longest time, so we discontinued doing it. Uh, we came up to a mold change. Um, and we just said at the time it was, it was really expensive to do it. We didn't have the volume of sales for the ID, so we just didn't do it. Well, um, I think if you're going after a market that the Honeywell people have, mm -hmm. and let's say Eagle, you think about their approach, they actually have an ID mount. Mm -hmm. So if you're after that business, I would say that you probably need an ID mount, just to parallel what they've already done. Swap theirs out, put yours on. Correct. It's interchangeable. And that's really, to us, the market value of that. Right. Not that we wouldn't promote the integral mount because there are some obvious advantages. Right. There are some people that just don't want to make that drastic of a change from what they're doing. Right. And and just so, uh, just so you guys know, we're working on something new. Um, I was hoping to have it here. Um, they told me I couldn't have it here. So something around the corner real soon is coming. And I know you guys don't usually congregate like this all together, uh, but once a year. So unfortunately, I think it's going to come in a little later than what, we, what you and I talked about. Uh, but once that comes out, we'll let you guys know. And uh, I don't know how much more I can say about that. So, so would this new product be commercialized in the year 2021? Is that the point? As of right now? Yes, okay. with like, like the next couple of months. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so I'll get with you once that, okay. or you, yeah, your team once that, once that happens. Okay. <clears throat> uh, basically the same board transducer um, in all the, the, the units that we have or versions that we have. Uh, we have a 25 point uh, rig calibration process um, to uh, ensure accuracy. Now the one thing that this particular unit has that really, in my opinion, um, we're gonna do better on, is that everything is mated to the bore. So you can't change out a transducer, okay, pressure transducer. You can't change out a temperature probe. That's all married and, and uh, calibrated to the board. So if something were to happen, it's a dead unit. And that's kind of the, the drawback to this unit. Rarely do we ever see it, 
But if it did happen, it's kind of like the chip on the modified prover. We don't do the modified prover anymore because we don't have any chips for the boards. So when do we ever see a chip go out? Very rarely. But if it does, it's a dead prover from this point on. It's a Model 6. It's either an upgrade on Model 6 or it's a brand new Model 6. Okay, so kind of same with this, this unit. <clears throat> uh, we are NMI, um, or all of the calibration systems that we use are NMI uh, traceable. So if a customer came back and said, hey, do we have any calibration um, certificates on this? It's all traceable back to NMI. Uh, intrinsically safe alkaline or lithium battery. This is a unit that has the alkaline battery that we want to get away from. Okay, so if you order this, I would recommend you order it with the lithium battery to keep your hair like Greg um, on your head. <clears throat> so the alkaline battery has five years of nominal life, and, <laughs> and the lithium. Well, I just want to see if you're awake. Um, and the lithium pack on this one is about 12 years. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> That's what everybody here says. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what are we talking about now? Both alkaline or just lithium? I would not spend my time on alkaline. Batteries. <clears throat> and, and our correctors are all lithium. Yeah, the newer ones are all The newer yes. we only were in lithium. Yeah. Yes, right. yes. We have replacement ba alkaline packs out there for the cheap skates who want an alkaline battery pack. I wouldn't. I, I would try not to offer that. It's just a headache for you guys. Yeah, we, 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 we typically don't. But whenever we say we have a lithium battery pack in stock, and then we would say, you know, we may be low. We don't have as many as you need. Then they're like, well, we're going to swap. Yeah, it's hard to say no. Yeah. So also, some don't have the software downloaded or cable communication, so if they want to change to a different type of battery, they have no capabilities of doing that without us going out and helping them. They could change the battery. But they can't tell the software it's not alkaline anymore, it's lithium. Do you have to? Yes. Okay. I'm not... There's a tab that... Oh, there's a, there's a check. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, the, the alkalines are really hard. I mean, you guys keep them in the refrigerator? Yeah, so if, if I were you and you guys have to have an alkaline battery pack, put it in the refrigerator. It's going to hold up longer. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, anything, I mean, I keep my batteries in the fridge at home. Yeah, so that's, that's what you want to do. Put, put them in the fridge. You don't have to do that with lithium, but you, you should do that with alkaline. That must be an old person thing. <laughs> Greg. Wow. Greg. Greg, warm it up. Greg, warm it up. Warm it up. There you go. Warm it up. That was going to take a while, but warm it up. <laughs> Maybe not tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> uh, three user programmable 4A outputs. Now, the really cool thing about the IMC is we're able to do dual output. On these so if a customer needs more outputs this is the only unit you can do that on now I know you guys sell um, Eagle and they've got tons of outputs you can you can come off of this one you can if you if you do um, uh, specify it we can come out with two two separate outputs to give you more but this is the only unit that can do that uh, we do do uh, circular conduit uh, cable gland connections and you guys know a lot of that is either going to be the cable gland or the conduit. The military style connector, which we do have, is an additional cost from us. And we pass that savings on to you. And you pass that savings on to your customer. So most of your customers out there will either do a conduit or they'll do a cable gland. Uh, we do have extensive logging capabilities up to 16 parameters, but the more you ask it to do, the, the, the less logging capability you have in terms of time, time or, or days, okay? Um, class one, div one, uh, programmable form A outputs, um, and it's compatible with AMR devices just like the other units that you, we, we talked about earlier. Uh, common features, the faults and alarms, same thing. Um, 
you have the option to turn them on, turn them off, just like everything else that we have that we talked about before. This will be redundant now because now we know what the electronics will do, uh, the dresser electronics. They're all on the same platform. Okay, we modeled everything off of and improved on the IMC. This is the original electronic um, unit that we did sell or that we do sell. And the meterware follows this template. So this was the original. Omar, is there new software coming out or what version should we be using that on? 2.0. 2.0. Everybody get that? Yeah. And we have USB drive with it on, on the shelf in the back. Of IMC? MCAT. MCAT. Okay. And I think Rashad just emailed you something. Just he just sent everybody in the company the link to download me your work. And so, we still have to update the older units out there. Okay. Hey, if you go back to the slide, what's that new box that you guys added for the pulse on the bottom right? For for oh, fault pulse output connect configuration. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rashad, can you talk, can you answer that question? Sure. What, what, was the, what was the question about the pulse output? Yeah, the bottom right. If you're looking at my screen, the the fault. Of oh, this is bigger. Um, fault pulse pulse output configuration. Oh, okay. Okay. This right here. Hey, Omar, I don't know if uh, you all might have covered this while no I was out, but um, all the new DP units, they have the new face on them also, correct? New face and new face. And, and button, right? Okay. Yeah, that's all been yeah. upgraded. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the prior company that we were associated with didn't let us do a lot of things that we thought would be best for the product. Um, now the new company is letting us do the things that are best for the product upgrades. So it'll look a little different um, and it'll it'll be a better product that that uh, that we're we're selling now. Good deal. Okay. Too bad they couldn't do that with Greg. But anyway, common features across the micro corrector product line, of course configuration screen, um, all of your what you'll see uh, and all the electronic products um, will all look the same again. Just it just the the, the new uh, the new meter wear just looks a little bit different, but it all follows the same uh, same screens. So if you click over here on the configuration screen, you can click on any one of these, and it'll take you where you need to go. So if you're not familiar with what these tabs do, that's okay. You don't need to click on them to find out where you're going. You just find what you need here, click on it, and it'll take you right to where you need to go. So for those of you that haven't, haven't touched the, um, the MCUT software, 
or the meterware software, that's kind of a cheap, cheap, short way to get there. Okay. Fast way to get there. If you don't know what those other tabs are, we'll take you right there. Any questions on that? Anybody that wouldn't have touched the IMC or uh, the M cutter meterware? Has everybody done that, Tim, in your group? Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. It's like check. Greg, do you wear that? Yes, sir. Good. Even Greg can do it. Even Greg can do it. Awesome. Uh, so you can log up to 16 parameters again. Check what you want seen on the screen. Uncheck what you don't want seen on, or what they don't want seen on the screen. Uh, you can choose report log data. Uh, you can log data reports. Um, that logs the battery voltage. So you're able to see what it was or when you started, when you were there before, uh, and what it is when you come back and see it again. So you can see how much battery is being use, used uh, at the site. <clears throat> Uh, configurable features, again, uh, configurable log data reports. For example, you can see if you log 16 parameters, the number of logs that it can accept and log are 3,800. Um, and of course, that's 159 days of logging data. So the less you log, the more days you get. So, yes? Just really quick, I was gonna mention, it did send that link for me to wear, but it went to my spam folder, so if you can't find it, spam folder. Bam. You're saying the more things you want to try, the less space. Okay. The less space it has memory wise. Okay. Okay? And the less you log, the more space you'll have to. Alright. So that's something they need to Yeah. You still have the options, right? Hour of the day if you want to. Mm-hmm. So you just change that to one of those profiles and then you get more log and can Yep. Get rid of the hourly, for example. Most people want to take a lot more log time. Yep. Okay, so IMC can be fitted either on Series A or Series B meters. But again, your boss, the mandate is sell what? B. Series B. <laughs> well, they said that with such enthusiasm. B series. There it is. There you go, baby. There it is. All right. So we do that through uh, the series B through 56M uh, meters. Now you can't sell a series B 102 because a 102 is just a 102. For any of you that sold one, Tim. Yes, I have. Boom. Great. Boom. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be a series A. That's the only cast iron meter we sell. Um, back in the day. Um, Tim, Greg, when you were with Jesus in class, um, <laughs> we had <clears throat> we had we had the uh, and Moses, we had the 23m, 23, 38, 56, and 102 were all cast iron meters, big giant. We call those foot mounts because you can only mount them on the ground. Other than we have seen a 102 mounted on the wall. With piping. Wow. Yeah, we got a we got a we got an inquiry one day. This was out of Atlanta, and the guy calls and says, "Hey, man, your meter's using all kinds of oil." So the first thing we do is say, "Send us a picture." We saw a 102M mounted on the wall, and said, "You better get that down." You know, that That's not worth two thousand pounds. That's a huge yeah. meter, guys. It's big. <clears throat> it's as big as this table, and it's all cast iron. Well, back in time, 20 years ago, we sold one of these. We first got bought the company, and they had an electric fork truck. So a little, you know, we roll up to the truck, and that 23 or the uh, 102 in came in. It, we had to get somebody else's fork truck to get it off the truck. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a heavy motor. It's, it's big. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what the exact weight on it is. I couldn't tell you offhand, but it's it's the impellers themselves are huge. They'll fit on this table. Two of them will fit on this table. The two will. Yeah, it's, they're, they're just enormous. But um, yeah, so now the 23, uh, 38, 56 are all aluminum. And those can be mounted in the pipe set. Um, so yeah, kind of, kind of a cool little piece of information. Um, 
On the Series B, you can do internal pressure, internal temperature on the IMC. So it'll look something like this. One, trans one trans transducer will be pressure and the other will be temperature. So it's all encapsulated in the meter body, just like that one is. So you see no external pressure connections and no external temperature connections. It's all captured right in the cover. Okay. So what you'll do is you'll just take the, uh, the oil fill plug or one of the plugs, the access plug off on that counter end cover and you'll screw in your transducer so the customer doesn't see it at all. So the customer or other people can't tamper with it either. So it's all encapsulated. Or you can do external, external, or you can do external pressure, internal temperature. Yeah. So several ways of doing it. Um, we also do it on high pressure meters, so we have a transducer for that. Do you have any for high pressure? Not on the high pressures, no. Yeah. You we might want to maybe put one or we two. We order a lot, but uh, it's here and there, so and based on configuration of what the customer wants, uh, we mm -hmm. just normally don't keep them stock. Yeah, so basically if you've got a customer that had a unit go down, the end unit, the accessory unit, and you didn't have one on the shelf and you had to order from us, you know you're going to wait. Seven months. Yes. <laughs> Four weeks. Thank you. Um, yeah. You know if you had a transducer on there that could handle the pressure, you guys could sell them an IMC. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So do the are the new ones going to have the a true 1480 gauge in it, or is it going to be absolute pressure? What new one? Well, I mean, uh, of course it will. Yes, of course it will. Yeah. So I can't be talking about that stuff. Okay, so these have the 12 bar, which is 175 uh, PSI transducer in them. Now, there are customers that do 2 bar. I don't like those customers. I think 2 bars are a waste of money, in my opinion. Do you carry any 2 bar? No. Do you have any customers that request 2 bar? We have before. But you sell them a 12 bar. Mm -hmm. Good deal. I'll tell you one time I had to go when I was in tech services, I had to go to Waxahachie to that um, the solo plant where they do that styrofoam because they kept getting a fault on their um, IMC. So I did the download of the, do the data logs. It was a two bar and they were running 38 pounds of pressure. They over exceeded their two bar. So it was a waste of money for them. I do not like two bar. There are customers that want the two bar that don't go to that pressure. That's fine. And I'll try to sell them the 12 bar. But it's up to them if they want to spend the money and they up the pressure, they're only, they only get 30 pounds. Okay? So just so you know. And that's a, that's a headache you, you don't have to deal with. And that's good. <clears throat> Um, stocking 400 assemblies is going to be just like stocking this guy here. You'll have less stock on the shelf. You're able to program whatever it goes on. You just tell it what you're putting it on and you program it. You're good to go. So the electronics are the way to go for you guys. It's going to save you a bunch of money, save you, uh, save you a lot less room uh, in the warehouse. <clears throat> Now, uh, directional flow is programmable, just like on the electronics. Forward, reverse, forward plus reverse, forward minus reverse, whatever it is, okay? Um, instantaneous uh, uncorrected flow rate. Now, on the IMCs, we do that in a temperature. We do that temperature and pressure, and of course the PTZ, which has some super compressibility, which some customers want, some customers don't know what that is they don't need it a PTZ if you sell it I would do the PTZ only and just let them have it uh, just so you have so you don't have many units on the shelf so PTZ is the way to go and of course the DP for some of your customers who do differential um, monitoring or that you do differential for them 
Do you guys have any customers that, that do that? Yeah. They request you come out and check differential? We've had the request before, but more likely than not, we're doing that internally. Okay. Well, it's a great tool for them to show them um, going forward. So you got high and low flow rate, just like on the other electronics. Um, in addition to the pressure and uh, temperature alarms uh, on the IMC. Um, this is smart proof. Okay, so smart proof is going to work for just your IMC on your Model 5 and Model 6 provers. Okay, just for the IMC. And of course, it's going to be fast proven as well. So your customers that may have at this point mechanical units that don't want this guy here but want the logging capabilities and the pr live pressure capabilities of the IMC um, <clears throat> those guys are going to be able to um, see the quick testing of the IMC as well so mechanical takes a long time electronic no time at all Okay. Any questions about that? Testing. Any of you tested with the uh, with the corrector? I'm sure you have. Are you the only one in here that you have as well? Okay. Okay. Good. Matt's worked at our shop. Okay. Here's another neat thing Natalie asked earlier when she was uh, when we were doing the ETC is the trim table. So I got a call from uh, Mississippi, Atmos, Mississippi, and they were there was a uh, a professor who wanted to do um, an evaluation of his classroom and how much gas he was using. The problem was he just had a bunch of little burners going on all the time, and so it was a low flow um, application. So we put a small, I think, 15 C meter there. And we did the, the corrector and we enabled the trim table. So you guys know that at, and please say you do know this, at startup, a meter is, yes, 90% accurate. Great, good, good answer. So where is that 90%? That 90% is back here. Okay, so, so basically the meter is turning, but it's not in the, in the percent of accuracy that a, that a uh, gas utility wants to see. So if we enable the trim table, so what it does now is it makes up for that lag in accuracy. It takes it, takes it and puts it in there and says, okay, the, the impellers are turning at, let's say, start rate, but, but the microcorrector, I'm dead, the microcorrector is telling it you are at 100%, you're running 100% accurate. So that's the trim table. Only dresser has trim table. And only dresser has the trim table. Yes. So for, for customers that are going to see that low flow um, inaccuracy under our rangeability, that's where this comes into play. And that's a good sell and it works. Yes. So a quick, quick infomercial here. In the old days, if you want an old diaphragm customer that's been told for years, hey, you lose low flow on a rotor meter, this is your methodology for converting them to a dresser meter, the electronics. You enable that trim table, and so the performance curve now doesn't have a knee in it. It now has flat lines just like a diaphragm would, in the low, low volumes. You show them the tool, you explain how it works. Those objections leave very quickly and allow you to replace that large diaphragm with the rotor meter with the right electronics. Yep. Or is, is that capable in the D1000s as well for a trim table on those? We do not have a trim table on those <clears throat> at all. The only thing that has a trim table is going to be the microcorrector. Because it's 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 correcting for pressure and temperature. Where you have a, a tool that you can enable fixed, we're not going to put it on there. Okay. Yep. 
Do we give up anything to enable? You give up nothing. It's built in, why not use it? It's a real tool against the other electronics too. I mean, it's a, and it's developed by Dresser. It's their product, yep. it's their director. The data was built, I mean, these tables and the enable, enabling that trim table comes from years of history of that product that nobody has but Dresser. I mean, it's a great tool. I used to get it all the time. So I'm not gonna change out my diagram because I'm gonna just miss my pile. So. Yep. So Omar, I guess we're talking about this. The Adam PTZ does not have any type of trim table capabilities. Nope. That's huge. That's a big deal. Yeah. And I want to and I want to say that their battery is built into the board. Yeah. So if you have to change the battery, I think you have to change everything. On an attitude. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I don't mess with them. I don't mess with that stuff. But yeah. So anyway, my computer just died, guys. Um, any other? The one thing I probably missed out on um, now that I'm thinking about it on the DP corrector. Um, the really neat thing about the DP corrector is it builds its own curve. So as it sees that DP. It's given the curve. You know, people always talk about what's what's the curve. Um, basically, what um, what's my baseline? You know, we can give them a baseline curve of what the meter is. This actually builds that curve as the unit learns the DP of the meter at different volumes and flow rates. It builds its own curve. So that's another good thing that you're able to tell the customer or sell to the customer is that it's going to build its own curve. So a lot of customers will say, Hey, can you send me the curve? of the meter uh, when you when it was born and basically we say no we give you the open rate we give you the check rate so when you put it into the service when you put it into service you create your own curve while the meters in the line set right so you know what that meter did at birth in your line set and you can kind of monitor it and see where it's going and the health of that meter as it progresses in its life if you don't build that curve, you'll never know. Hence, that's why people do differential testing. So um, I can sell, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a conversation that can go on all day, Tim knows, and most of you in the, in the, in the industry know, differential testing, differential is a, is a, yeah, you're laughing back there, is something that you can talk about all day long with a customer. Um, but always know that it only gives you the health of the meter. It does not tell you accuracy whatsoever. Okay. So for customers that uh, want to monitor a site, um, that DP corrector, you just go out there and say, well, it tells you what the DP is. You have a DP, DP calculator. You got, you got instantaneous volume. That's already there on the screen. You don't have to calculate that because it's telling you what it is. Plug in all those numbers, and you get it right then and there. Or you download the curve. So another couple, couple neat, some neat things about that DP corrector. Download the curve by connecting to the. Yeah, you see what the curve is. Yeah. So neat stuff. Thank you, Omar. That's really good.